Okay, everyone, we're back for a round two fight of more Brawler, Tech, and Slash, and the beat em up genre here. Let's go to a really, really cool game uh, uh, called Shadow Force. And uh, it's really, really interesting because, I mean, uh, I would assume this game could have been called, like, Ninja Force, but uh, you might not remember that in Europe, way, way, way back, uh, 1990s and such, they did not allow usage of that word. And uh, we had Teenage Mutant. Hero Turtles rather than Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles as in other regions. And, of course, there's a certain turtle that had his weapon censored and it was replaced with another weapon. A little bit of a trivia question there, but do you know what weapon I'm talking about? Winners don't use drugs. At least, uh, some things don't change. I love how many of these games have these, uh, public service announcement type things. But, yes, I'm gonna call this Ninja Force anyway, because, I mean, uh, even, like, uh, Ninja Gaiden and such would be, uh, like a shadow name in another country even back then. Uh, we'll pick the ninja character here. Okay, it has like a bow staff weapon like, uh, Donatello to a degree. And this game is really, really cool because it's not like your typical, like, punch, kick, and jump. You literally have a whole onslaught of moves like in your typical fighter's history and such games. I mean, you literally use six buttons here. On top of that, you can actually possess the enemies. I mean, check this out. I'm gonna possess the enemy and become the enemy. How awesome is that? That is so damn cool. You can do that with, like, uh, many enemies in the game. We need to be able to do that more often. It's like Kirby with ninjas! But a really, really awesome game while we're playing. And look at that. I mean, I'm using, like, all my buttons here. All six of them here. That is so damn cool. Okay, let's try using some special moves, too. And, uh, we can even do, like, uh, input hockey binds here. And then we're gonna bring in the second player here. Uh, let's bring in the female character, maybe. Device index to PlayStation Classic. Uh, put select. Uh, we'll pick the female character here. Uh, there we go. Should be a fun win here. Oh, I picked the wrong character, but... Oh, yeah, I picked the right character. Never mind. This character is so cool. Right, way faster. And let's try to possess some more enemies here. Look at that. That's insane. Oh, we got two of them possessed at once. This works for me, folks. Technos for the win. And obviously, Technos is behind Double Dragon, Renegade, uh, River City Ransom, and so many other games. But Shadow Force, aka Ninja Force for the win here, without a doubt. And we'll move on to some other games, because there's another really, really cool game that I have to showcase as well. But we'll do a little bit more of this. Like I said, I mean, it's real easy. I can go into, like, the typical Capcom games. But I'm going to try to go into games that are lesser known. Like this. I mean, I doubt any of you have ever even heard of, let alone play this game. Definitely uh, fits the bill for a great hack and slash beat em up brawler game though. But we're gonna go back into the input hockey binds. Make sure you disable because it can actually affect other games from being able to boot properly if you don't have it uh, set up right. But we're gonna go to the playlist here and uh, we're gonna go to a gauntlet style game which has a little bit of a beat em up brawl style thing, a little bit like Dungeon Magic. We're talking about Wizard Fire, the sequel to Dark. Now, aside the fact that we had PSA messages like winners don't use drugs in many of these other games back then, I love the fact that this game is essentially the child of a game like Lightbringer, aka Dungeon Magic, and golly, I mean, it definitely shows there. And by the way, as far as two-player mode activate, I would recommend having it disabled until you get a game with your first character, because some games like this, Shadow Force, aka Ninja Force in my opinion, and this, uh, other games like Double Dragon would typically not allow you to insert coins that coin insert mechanism would be screwed up if you have it activated in advance, but if you have a second controller, not a a problem. I mean, if you're legitimately using two controllers, port one, port two, etc., it's fine. But if you try to activate it for one controller for both of them, like I'm about to do right here, uh, let's go to hockey binds for port two. If you actually have this enabled as the same device index as your first controller, and you enter double drag and shadow force, etc., you're gonna not be able to enter coins whatsoever. So make sure it is left alone until you get in game, then you're fine to go. But we're gonna do this right here, two player mode activate. Uh, we're gonna pick the wizard because. We have Wizard Fire in a game called Wizard Fire. And uh, the game pulls no punches. I mean, it's an awesome, awesome tour de force of amazing production values, typical for day to East games. I mean, what day to East game was a bad game. I love all of them. Even Bad News is awesome. Even with this Easter egg homage to another particular game. Spoiler alert, Karnov. I love when Karnov shows up in these games. He's like in 12 to 13 games all together. But uh, this game pulls no punches. It feels like a gauntlet mixed in with gauntlet, uh, should we say, uh, Dungeon Magic, aka Lightbringer. And uh, we're gonna be getting to a crazy boss from the get-go. Check this out. Oh, if there's any way to drain your course, it's right here. Uh, but we're gonna, we're gonna throw a little bit of awesomeness here, because we have cheats here. We can go to cheats, and they will cheats, Infinity Magic, uh, for player two, Infinity Hearts, and we're gonna do it, uh, Infinity Magic, 
for a course out. Player one, it's pretty hard. And check this out. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Look at this crazy stuff. And look, we turn into a pig like in the original Willow that Capcom made for NES. And of course, the Eggplant Wizard in Kid Icarus. I always hated getting turned into the pig in both games because she had to revert the spell. Uh, of course, we can do the cheats again. Infinity Magic again. I uh, didn't mean to do Invincibility. Oops. <laughs> Infinity Magic. Infinity Magic. Look at this. Oh, yeah. We're going to take this guy down really, really quick here. Oh, yeah. We want to do Magic again. We can. But look at that crazy uh, light bar dead out of me. Oh, uh, we got this. And uh, even though it says Infinity Magic, it doesn't really do Infinity Magic. It just maxes it out for that given moment in time. Magic. Magic. There we go. Bam! You just gotta do it a couple times if you want to on the bosses. <laughs> Crazy. Oh, yeah. Definitely makes a damn difference here. We'll try it one more time for a good measure. So damn awesome, though. We should be able to take this boss out with one more streak of magic. 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 Bam! There we go. <laughs> That's so ridiculous. You can literally spend like $2 alone on this boss. It's crazy. It's like doing Shredder, the final boss at TMNT. But like I said yesterday when I was doing them uh, uh, widescreen games like Ninja Warriors, I talked about other games like Darius have an amazing uh, widescreen as well. And uh, this is no different the next game I'm going to load up. We're going to do it right now. Uh, we're going to do Warrior Blade, a.k.a. Rastin 3. I mean, we have Rastin, Rastin Sega 2, and Warrior Blade, which is... Uh, very, very much like an open board game. It feels like an open board game. Like I said, widescreen games are few and far between. I mean, so damn awesome. I mean, you're super for yourself here. This is a nice multi monitor game. Uh, we can pick uh, Rost in here. We'll pick him. And he's uh, AKA Conan the Barbarian as far as I'm concerned. He is so Conan. He looks exactly like Conan. And look at this amazing widescreen ability here. We're going to go into two player mode to activate here. Uh, hockey Binds for port two. There we go. And here we want to pick our second character. We'll pick Dewey. Oh, look how fast he is. He feels like a character straight out of Thunder Fox, mashed up with Castlevania. You might notice that the volume is a little bit low, like in games like uh, WWF, WrestleMania, Mortal Kombat used to be. Uh, so we're going to have to talk uh, to Mahoney G944 about trying to maybe hard code a fix in for this to make the volume louder. Very, very cool game. It feels like an open board game. Oh, hell yeah. And for right now, I'm actually going to turn the volume up until we get the fix in there. You can also do it through dip switches. Listen to the amazing music. This is so cool. Oh yeah. And you can actually choose your pass. I mean, it has some nice set pieces as well. Definitely feels like a little bit of the mashup of Masters Universe open board. Look at that, you can choose between castle. We'll do the tower stage next. And you can like fly on dragons, slide down mountains. Look at this. Whoa. This is awesome! Literally going from one monitor to the next in the arcade here. We're gonna do like a special attack. Oh, <laughs> how awesome is that? So yes, uh, as far as open board games are concerned, this is like the child of Streets of Rage and uh, of course like uh, Beats of Rage. Oh, hell yeah! So we have a lot of child of uh, other games today. And I'm definitely gonna have to try to get a fix in here for the volume. We want to be able to have the proper volume. I mean, it's typical for Midway games, but uh, for this game right here, I mean, and all three of these games are so different from one another. I mean, usually when you play like Castlevania 1, 3, etc., they're pretty similar to each other, albeit with Castlevania 2 being a little bit of a Metroidvania game to a degree. But of course, uh, we can uh, do games like Rastin, which is very, very different in this. I mean, Rastin 1 is nothing like this. This is more like Golden Axe, in fact. Okay, special medicine here. Marine medicine, what the hell is this stuff doing? Game is so cool. It definitely is fit of like a Conan mashup with Conan. And I love the fact that you can choose your own adventure through the stages and stuff. We'll definitely do a couple more games here. Because as far as the artistry for games, I mean, creative design, I have a perfect game to showcase next. And I would love to see this done as like a Castlevania game. I mean, imagine a Castlevania... Uh, side screw and brawler beat em up game. That's gonna be awesome. But uh, we're gonna do this boss real quick, and then we're gonna move on to another game. What the hell? I know that some of these enemies are actually speaking in German. What the hell is that about? That is interesting. And by the way, speaking of Conan the Barbarian, the Conan game on PS3 is actually uh, an amazing kind of war clone. I'm gonna have to showcase that in another video. Oh, we got this. We got this. 
Oh, yeah. And on that note, we're going to go to another game real quick. Uh, let's go to the playlist there. We're going to go to a game that has a little bit more artistic, creative design here. We're talking about Pula Rula, and I'd recommend playing the Japan version because uh, the USA and other versions are censored. There are so many things here. If you ever played like Cho and Nikki with that crazy, crazy artistic vision, which is a fun, fun, grittiest inspired shmup, this game is no different here. This feels like if Studio Ghibli ever made uh, Brawler, this would be it. I love the Studio Ghibli movies. Princess Mononoke for the win! Okay, we got this show on the road here. Look at this amazing artistic design here. This is so awesome. Okay, and the game gets really, really crazy by the time you get to the third stage. We're trying to get a little bit into the game here. Uh, let's do a two-player uh, mode activate again on this one. Why not? I mean, for the win here. Bam! <laughs> Okay, now we're gonna do two-player mode activate here. It really does feel like a Studio Ghibli movie. Oh, yeah! Just, I mean, this game was so far ahead of its time. I mean, back in 1990, 91 when this game came out, there was no other game at all that even remotely looked like this. I mean, the closest thing to this was probably Asterix. <laughs> okay. Ah, uh, we got this. We need to at least get to the third stage. So you can see that crazy, crazy stuff. It's almost like a nasty trip. Okay, we're gonna do this. <laughs> oh, how cool is that? Okay, let's get to the next stage here. Like I said, the game starts out pretty uh, standard. Sub issue, I'll beat with the amazing artistic creative design. But when you get to the third stage, it turns into Cho and Nikki uncharted territory. And I'm gonna definitely have to showcase Cho and Nikki in a future too. But what is your favorite Cho and Nikki, uh, should we say, favorite Studio Ghibli film? Okay, we're on the second stage, it's pretty standard right now. Almost feels like it could be like a Castle Illusion side scrolling brawler here. Great music, great design here. And it's going to get really, really crazy when we get to the next stage. You'll see. <laughs> okay. And like I said, there are so many. There are literally hundreds of Brawler style games you can play for the arcade. And we're going to, you know, showcase these through volume 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Then I'm going to move on to some other systems like Atari. Because Atari has so many crazy Brawler games too. I mean, we got uh, literally a golf uh, Brawler game uh, <laughs> with a ninja. Ninja Golf for Atari 1700 for the win. Oh, yeah. And uh, speaking of ninja movies, one of my favorite ninja movies was Ninja 3 Domination. Never remember that movie? Oh, uh, where literally the uh, spirit of a ninja possesses uh, <laughs> a construction utility worker. It's really cool. One of my favorite uh, B movies. Like I said, my friend used to take martial arts on Fridays and he'd rent many uh, martial arts movies uh, on the way home. And I'd come over, we'd watch them, and I've seen so many movies like American Ninja with Michael Dudikoff. Uh, Ninja 3 Domination. I mean, I love all those Ninja movies. Still love them to this day. Love going back to them. What the hell is this about? Okay. <laughs> okay. We need to get to the third stage here. Oh, set piece like in our uh, Warrior Blade here. What the hell is this? Get a little bit closer here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> And this is nothing, it gets a lot crazier. Like I said, make sure you play the Japan version of it, because the Japan version is uh, by far the uncensored. Oh, what the hell is that about? We got this. Okay, we should be getting to the third stage with this crazy multiplexity next. We should be able to showcase these one more uh, brawler game next. Okay. It's like when you're playing Castlevania 3 and you defeat them and then they turn into their human form. I love the fact that you can play as the characters, and uh, speaking of Castlevania, I would love to see Grant show up in like the anime, like the future seasons of Netflix, the Castlevania anime, or even like a future Castlevania game. They said that the pirate timeline did- WHAT THE HELL?! Okay, this is what I'm talking about. This is stage 3, it's like literally an after trip! Whoa! And it gets crazier than this, folks! Just watch, just- WHAT?! This right here is actually censored from the USA version! <laughs> oh, jeez! I don't know even what to say with this. Oh man, if you literally were on a bad acid trip, you would be in hell right now. Oh, we gotta showcase at least one more game though. <laughs> okay, definitely give this game a shot again. Pull a roll up for the win here. I mean, do a 2-2 a for win combo. 
Oh, Pula Rula and Choa Nikki. And there are so many different Choa Nikki's on Sega Saturn, PS1, PS2, and there's even a TurboGrafx CD version while we're playing. But Pula Rula for the win, all the way. It feels like a studio Ghibli having a child with Choa Nikki. Oh, uh, what else do we have here? We have at least. Oh. Let's take on the child of Pit Fighter in Double Dragon Streets of Rage, and we have Guardians of the Hood. <laughs> oh, jeez. Guardians of the Hood, the last demonstration of today's Volume 2 video is a guilty pleasure of mine. I'd easily put this in my top 10 brawler games because it's so fun to play two player mode. Actually, look, we got Steven Seagal matched up with Hagar style character by right. We got a Jim Cotton style character matched up with Jean Claude Van bottom left. All the various characters from martial arts movies from 80s. We got Macaulay Culkin. And it's uh, all the games like I've done today where we have gone like crossed over with. Dungeon Magic, aka Lightbringer. We had our amazing Wizard Fire game. Then, of course, we had Cho Nikki uh, crossed over with Studio Ghibli, and we had Pillar Brula, and so on. We're gonna go and input hockey binds. And like I said, this is such a fun game because it's like Franco, Formiga, crossed over with Pit Fighter and Streets of Rage, etc., etc. And you have characters from like some. Very, very interesting 80s movies. I mean, Jim Kata was essentially a gymnast going on a spy mission. How fun and crazy was that? Then we have Gotcha with a paintball movie. Crossover spies and stuff as well. Uh, we got this. There we go. Okay, check this crazy stuff out here. It gets really, really crazy. Love this music. It feels like whoever did this music also worked on Road Rash 1 and 2. And the uh, crazy thing is, if you ever play Pit Fighter, make sure you play the Mega Drive version. It is far superior to the Super Nintendo version. I mean, some games are just way, way better on Mega Drive than they are on Super Nintendo. Even Mickey Mania is better on Mega Drive than it is on Super Nintendo. Here we have the skill of technology, which is similar to... Look at that! Oh, hell yeah! That was crazy! Oh, I love this. And this is a great two-player mode, I think, game. Like I said, feels like I have Frank Dux. AKA, uh, kick, you know, blood sport, crossed over with, uh, Jim Cotta here. Another movie I liked from back then was, like, Gotcha, and then, of course, Tough Turf with James Spader and Kim Richards. Love all these crazy movies from back then. We're gonna get to the next section here. Look, there's Tanya Harden. Let's see what's up with her. <laughs> hey, Tanya Harden. Let's do a little Jim Cotta flip there. Oh, she been slapped me in the kneecap with her purse. What the hell is going on? There, things never change. Kind of like the crash test deli parody with Woody Allen and Quick. Oh yeah, I love this thing. This music is so inspirational. It reminds me of like Rogue Armored Force music from the Diddy East classic. A little bit of Standwish mode anyway. We're gonna get to the bonus stage here and do some more wrestling moves. But yes, it's a guilty pleasure of mine. I would love to see this game show up on, of course, like, uh, PS4, Switch, Xbox One. Unlikely, though. I believe, like, uh, Warner Brothers owns the rights to, uh, these games nowadays. We have a little bit of, like, the style of, uh, uh, so to speak, as, like, dark as well. Oh, this is crazy. Fun, fun game. And I love the pit fire sections as well, which I'm going to show you in the next section here. <laughs> wow. Oh, look at Elmo Smash. Uh, he's definitely my favorite character in this game. Why couldn't he have been in Expendables? Steven Seagal needs to do more wrestling moves in his movies, too. Okay, let's go to this thing here. You literally gotta fight against your compatriot here for it continues. So, yes, you're fighting for course to survive. Sandwich mode, activate, fight to survive! Okay, look, you're fighting against yourself here. <laughs> okay. Oh, Jim Kyle, not gonna work against the power driver! Oh, yeah! <laughs> oh, Pit Fighter never gets old, and I, I dare you to try the Super Nintendo version, then try the Mega Drive version. There's such a, a, a difference between the two. Even taking it in a game like Another World, aka Out of This World for Mega Drive, is way, way faster, like blast process and mode activate, in contrast to the very, very, very slow movement Super Nintendo version. Okay? Even Road Riot uh, is better on Mega Drive than it is on Super Nintendo. I'm not having any complaints with Mega Drive because the games that are good on Mega Drive are superior, but when you have the same port on both systems, sometimes it doesn't work out for the best. Even like Sparster, uh, aka Rocket Night Adventures, is better on Mega Drive than it is on Super Nintendo. Oh, hell yeah. I will do the final round here. And I'm hoping they do a fourth Expendables movie, but they need to have Steven Seagal in it. We need our Steven Seagal. <laughs> oh, kick to the... A uh, kidney there. Oh, I used to have friends come over. We played like Pit Fighter for hours on end, along with Joe, Montana Sports Talk Football, and of course, Immortal. Immortal was a great game on Mega Drive as well. Okay, hope you enjoyed the video, guys and gals. There'll be more to come.